Hello my dear friends, welcome back to CSER at home. In this video, we can study about vitamin D. Vitamin D is otherwise known as call calciferol. Okay, call calciferol. Next, we can study the requirement of vitamin D. How much vitamin D is needed for our body? That is represented in terms of recommended daily allowance by ICMR. For adult, 5 to 10 microgram is needed. 5 to 10 microgram. We can represent this concentration in international unit also. Okay, that means 200 international unit per day. For pregnant ladies, 10 microgram per day. Children, 10 microgram per day. Also written in international unit. Okay, that is 400 international unit. 60 above 600 international unit. What are the sources of vitamin D? Yeah, fish liver oil, fish, egg yolk and milk. Milk only contains moderate amount of vitamin D. Formation of vitamin D. Vitamin D is formed from 7-dehydrocholesterol. 7-dehydrocholesterol is the intermediate in cholesterol synthesis. Where it is present? It is present inside our epidermis. So when light falls on, okay, when UV rays, that is by photolysis, the 7-dehydrocholesterol is converted into secosterol and that is the provitamin. Secosterol is the provitamin and later this secosterol is isomerized into called calciferol, that is vitamin D3. Because it is formed from, by the action of this sunlight, this one is known as sunshine vitamin, called calciferol, that is vitamin D3 is otherwise known as sunshine vitamin. Now we can study the activation of vitamin D, that is called calciferol, it is transported into liver and then it is converted into 25 hydroxy called calciferol with the help of which enzyme 25 hydroxylase and with the help of this enzyme hydroxylation take place at which position 25th so it is known as 25 hydroxy called calciferol okay then this 25 hydroxy called calciferol is converted into the active form of vitamin D that is calcitrol with the help of which enzyme? 1 alpha hydroxylase. With the help of this 1 alpha hydroxylase, this 25 hydroxy called calciferol is converted into 125 dihydroxy called calciferol. That means hydroxylation takes place one more position. That's why 125 dihydroxy called calciferol. And this is the active form of vitamin D. It's known as calcitrol. Calcitrol is a hormone. This is the active form of vitamin D, calcitrol. Now we can study the functions of vitamin D. And which are the site of action? That is in intestinal cells, bone, osteoblast and kidney, where especially in distal tubular cells. And first function is absorption of calcium. We know that this calcitrol promote calcium absorption. Okay, calcitrol promote calcium absorption and it also help the phosphorus absorption from intestine. This calcitrol induce transcription of genes called for cal binding. What it is? Cal binding. Cal binding is a calcium binding protein. So, if the synthesis, that is, if the transcription of this calcium binding protein, that is, cal binding is increased, what happens? Yeah, calcium absorption increases. So, whenever this cal binding is available, calcium absorption is increased. So, first function is absorption of calcium. Then, second function is bone health. What is the effect of vitamin D in our bone? This calcitrol stimulate osteoblast to secrete a certain enzyme that is known as alkaline phosphatase. Alkaline phosphatase. Due to this enzyme, the concentration of phosphate increases. 
the ionic product of calcium and phosphorus increases that lead to mineralization of our bonds okay then renal tubules calcitriol increases the reabsorption of calcium and phosphorus by renal tubules that is the third function and how the regulation of calcitriol is occurring the regulation of calcitriol is by four compounds that is calcium phosphorus parathyroid hormones and by calcitriol itself so in hypercalcemia that is increased amount of calcium concentration in our body that decreases calcitriol okay and what happens in hypocalcemia calcitriol concentration is increases what are the deficiencies associated with vitamin d the first one is known as rickets and who is affected by rickets especially children okay what are the symptoms insufficient mineralization of bonds so the bonds become soft and pliable that is bone deformities okay bow legs then no knee and pigeon chest these are the symptoms of rickets hence this vitamin d is also known as anti rickettic vitamin okay anti rickettic vitamin then the next disease is osteomalacia and who is affected adult osteomalacia in adult here also the bone softened due to insufficient mineralization okay patients are more prone to get fractures in elderly okay elderly people are more prone to get fractures and these are the deficiency okay rickets and osteomalacia rickets in children and osteomalacia in adult if you like this video please like and subscribe thank you